was there an, an I guess what you would call an, an abuse of children and mistreatment of children? Yes, there was. So there's the stories of the children basically being kidnapped. There's the stories of them being forced to leave. They were removed from their families and weren't allowed to see their families. My grandmother is from north of Lake Vermilion and she and um, my grandfather and their brothers and sisters all went to the Vermilion School and I have researched the school and Indian boarding schools for quite some time now, probably at least 25 years. I think that Vermilion School might have been one of the kinder, gentler schools. It was smaller, so it wasn't one of the very large industrial schools. Because of its location in the middle of a native community, there might have been a closer eye kept on Vermilion. This is probably around 1910, and several of my relatives are in this picture. I know that I know that there were children who ran from Vermilion, as they did from all schools. My father was enrolled with the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, also a descendant of the White Earth Nation. He was raised by his grandparents. He never knew who his father was. And his grandfather was a survivor of the school up in Tower. Um, he apparently ran away when he was 14 from it. So this is, this is my great-grandfather. His name was um, Victor St. George. And on foot, he went from Tower, Minnesota to Superior, Wisconsin, alone, like through the woods. And I just can't even imagine how, what he was going through must have been pretty awful to do that. And then to never talk about it, because whatever it was, was that awful for him startling sometimes how much people don't know, how much non-Native people don't know. Most Indian people know a lot of this stuff, and I think it's important that we continue to figure out ways to keep it alive, but I think sometimes the harder parts of our history as a country that people don't know, then they don't believe it. And so if we don't find ways to keep it alive so that we don't repeat it, right? So we don't do it again. It's, it's hard, though, when people don't want to believe it. It's really, yeah, it's a, it's a lot to take in and a lot to swallow. And I think it is for, you know, for many uh, Native children, too, young, young people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard to comprehend that this is real, this really happened. I know when people went to the boarding schools, one of the really important pieces there for assimilation was that people speak, the children speak English. Sometimes the way to make them stop was they would beat them for using their language. And so I know a lot of people stopped using it and wouldn't teach it to their children. And that is, that's part of some of the stories that I learned from my auntie was like, you know, he told us not to talk Indian. My auntie talked about how he raised her to, you know, don't talk about it. Don't talk about being Indian. It's not safe. It's not good. It's people, people will be mean to you. You know, from my own family's experience, um, a couple generations of people were from families that were broken up. They were separated, scattered, sent other places, didn't see their parents. And then when they had their own children, they did not have the, the advantage that Anishinaabe people had had for many, many generations of intergenerational strength, of parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, extended family, blood or not, being part of their lives and part of their upbringing. And so with that great loss then, they were really kind of on their own, raising their own children in dealing with their own traumas. Minnesota Historical Society Press recently republished Linda's research collection on the school titled From Assimilation to Termination, the Vermilion Lake Indian School. The Historical Society says like many other boarding schools at the time, 
children were not allowed to speak Anishinaabe Mawin, were given Euro American clothing, and were rarely allowed to see their families even though the school was close to their home.